It's John Sherrard here again with Accelerated Technologies uh, and Jen is, is helping us too with camera and, and lending us this beautiful new uh, 850 that's, that's her ride, this 2021 MXZ 850 for this season. Um, if we get close to each other, we're in the same household. So. Uh, what we're, we want to do a video on how to do motorcycle and snowmobile ATV suspension sags and uh, so obviously we're going to focus this issue on, uh, on snowmobile sags and walk through that process. The, having the rear sag set properly is instrumental in the handling of a snowmobile. Um, we find quite often uh, riders uh, anywhere from 180, 200 to 300 pounds are buying these machines and overwhelming the stock torsion springs. So we want to walk through how to the process of how to do sags. Uh, right now you can see we've got the machine set on four dollies. We've got a dolly under the rear suspension arm, a dolly under the front, or we call it the center uh, skid, center shock arm, and then two dollies under the skis. And they're on fully rotatable casters, which is important because the skis have to not only scrub out as the rider gets off and on the machine, but they have to scrub away from the skid frame as the rider gets on the machine. So we're going to hop on now and, and show you that. Uh, typical target we use is about three to three and a half inches of rider sag. And rider sag is critical here, is the difference between fully topped up to rider on not the difference of static weight to rider on. That will not give you the true side number. So we're going to use our Koala Pieces uh, rear dolly here, top up the suspension, and right now we've got, uh, we, we also sell these, they're pretty cool, the Mo Tool uh, Slacker Tool. And uh, it is a, basically it's a simple digital tape measure. It comes with a uh, a strap, a remote strap on the handlebar for, uh, so that you can do this by yourself. And uh, Jen is going to show you the uh, phone app that's a free download uh, as well. Now, but she'll show that as we hop on board. So I'm going to put the, uh, the remote Bluetooth display back on the board so I can see that number if I happen to be working in the shop by myself. Um, it is zeroed now, showing a zero number. And I'm going to set it down, and uh, I think Jen's going to hold up the uh, my iPhone there with the display right on, and you can see that number. And we're just going to mimic mimic the display. So you don't need to purchase the additional Bluetooth uh, display. You can just use your phone app, but you can see here that number, and that number is in millimeters. So we're shooting for 75 millimeters of sag, which is three inches. And uh, I'm going to hop on now and see what we get here. I don't know, Jen, if you want to bother showing that again. You bet. So now on my display, I'm seeing 98, 98 millimeters. I'm not crushing the suspension up and down. I'm just jiggling it a little bit to see if I can get a repeatable number. So we're seeing anywhere from 92, 93, 94 millimeters. So well, that is darn near four inches of sag, which is too soft. We want to be in our street clothes, we want to be slightly under three inches of sag. So I've, I've got my tools here handy. I'm going to go up to position two on the torsion spring, both sides. Super easy and fast. No reason not to do this on the trail. I'm going to hop on again. And sit in a riding position, put your hands on the bars. So now we're, we've shed 10 millimeters there. We're around 82, 83 millimeters. So I'm going to hop off, advanced position three. And hop back on. If you're seeing a very big discrepancy in the numbers, this skid is 
not only brand new, but meticulously lubricated. So we're seeing nice repeatable numbers there. So 68 to 70 millimeters, perfect. Because um, we want to be just under three inches because I don't have my helmet on. I don't have my gear, my boots, uh, all my riding gear. And there's no snow in the tunnel. So if you were to visit this again halfway through your riding day, you might need to move up another preload measurement there. Um, but, and here's the big but, we don't want to hit target by just adding preload. Because when we get north of position 3, or, or if you've got an Arctic Cat or a Polaris, they generally have a 3 position cam. If you get in, uh, above the middle position and need to go to maximum in the garage, you've got the wrong torsion spring. Uh, torsion springs don't like to be over preloaded. Then when you're going through the whoops, it has a tendency of topping up against the scissor stop, and that's not pleasant at all. So uh, we're going to talk about other torsion springs we've got available, uh, picking the right ones for your weight and your gear, and your riding partner, fuel caddy on the back, etc. Uh, in a moment. And we're, we're now going to, uh, to change over to show you how to do it with an old school tape measure.